tú vas a hacer el, el introducción. Me tomaste muy Hi guys, it's John. <laughs> Call me baby. Uh, she's doing the intro today, guys. She doesn't speak much English, but she's trying. We got up at 4.30 in the morning this morning. It's now 6, 6 in the morning and the sun is up. We, could, we weren't really sleepy no more. So she wanted to smoke a joint. We smoked a joint and then we ended up having an early honeymoon before the sun came up. Anyways, I want to talk about today, my experience yesterday, what happened. I just got back from the surf trip. Once my uh, baby borracha went home, I was, uh, <laughs> when she went home, when she went home, She's been messaging me, asking me when I'm going to be home. <clears throat> I told her, okay, I'm home now. And she said, oh, okay, I want to come sleep over. And she's all, but I'm on my period, so we won't be able to bang. Who did this? Uh, I said, ah, it's okay, don't worry about it. She's all, but I do want to see you. And she said, I want to sleep with you over there. I want to stay with you tonight. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. But then she said, well, If you don't want, if you, if she's all, I know you want to, but if you can't, she said, I could give you a BJ. I said, eh, okay, but if I get really horny, then we'll just go all the way. Just put a towel or something. Um, and she said, okay, here's what ended up happening. She's been asking me to come over already. And then I said, okay, well, the problem is with her, sometimes she takes forever to answer because she doesn't have her phone all the time or get notifications all the time. Because, you know, sometimes she just leaves it around or she has it in to save data. They turn off their data so they don't get the um, messages until they turn it on again. Because they don't really have the people in Mexico don't really have the unlimited data plans. They pay as you go most of the time prepaid. And so they try to conserve their data and they turn it off and put it in like they turn off the data part of it. And so sometimes when we make arrangements, she won't answer for hours. <laughs> By the time she answers, it's like I've been waiting, so I invited somebody else over, right? And so yesterday, Bebecita also messaged me and said, hey, you're back. Uh, and I said, yeah, I'm back. Because they said, oh, how long are you going to be gone? So I told them how long I'm going to be gone and when I'm going to be back and stuff. And so she said, hey, are you back already? I said, yeah. And so I said, she's, I, she's all, hey, I'm here. I said, where? She's all right by your house. And I said, oh, with who? She was with one of her friends. Uh, they were buying something. And I said, oh, nice. So I said, oh, do you want to stay over tonight? And she said, yes. She said, let me just take care of my stuff. I'll message you. Just you can rest in whatever you need to do first. I said, okay. And so I always talk about like having your uh, belt and suspenders, meaning having a backup in case the belt. So like belt and suspenders is like you have your suspenders in case your belt breaks and your pants fall off. So you, ha you, don't, your you don't get caught with your pants down. Like the suspenders is your backup, which will hold up your pants, right? So that's kind of the saying there. I was uh, just trying to have my belt and suspenders. And like any of you guys that have tried to arrange a date or with a regular girl or even a date with a working girl or even an escort where it's their job to come and, you know, you make arrangements and have an appointment with them and they still don't show up. Notorious for showing up late and not answering and not even showing up at sometimes. And so Tim, the 72 year old, he always gets frustrated when he makes arrangements with these girls and they show up super late or they don't show up at all. They call last minute and say, oh, I, I can't come I'm on my period or whatever. And I told him, well, you know what that means, right? That means that they found a better option and that's where they're at or they're with their broke boyfriend. They just didn't feel like going anymore. And so they just act like nothing happened and then ignore it. And then they don't apologize. They don't have respect for your time. And then they just, uh, the next time you talk to them or see them, they act like nothing ever happened and that everything was okay. They act like everything's okay. And like they did nothing wrong, which in their eyes, they feel like they did nothing wrong because it's not a big deal for them. No one really taught them this et etiquette and like respecting people's time. So I guess it's like a cultural thing, you know? The Philippines is like that too, where they show up super late And like, instead of, they don't like confrontation. So instead of bringing up something they did wrong or they think they didn't do anything wrong, they just brush it off as if nothing happened. And you know, that's part of like their life of like, 
how they deal with hardship too is they just are able to forget about things quickly and move on. They have a short memory when it comes to that stuff, uh, bad stuff. So that way it helps them cope with their struggles and stuff. So I think that's part of the reason. And so going back to my story now that I've explained the situation a little bit. So I invited Bebecita over just in case she took forever to answer or doesn't show up, you know, like, cause that's what ends up happening sometimes. And usually they're really reliable. So it's annoying to me. I've been spoiled to where when I make arrangements with my girls, they show up like usually they show up no later than an hour later if they're getting ready and stuff. So like when like her, she takes three hours to answer or whatever, you know, then that's frustrating because then I wasted all that time that I had free time. I end up just inviting someone else, but I invite them only after she doesn't answer. And then she'll and you know what ends up happening is she'll answer right when the girls are here already. And I'm like, dude, you should have messaged me. You need to check your fucking messages or turn your shit on so you could get the uh, messages because now I invited somebody else over because you weren't answering. So I didn't know if you're coming or not. Right. This time normally. So what I would do is just wait. If she doesn't answer within a certain amount of time, I tell her that I'm like, look, if you don't answer within an hour to two hours, I'm going to invite somebody else. Just don't come over anymore because I can't wait. So I would wait till she doesn't answer or not show up or till I get impatient. And then I just invite someone else over, you know, they all live right by me. So they're here in less than five minutes. And so I usually wait and then I invite them over. But yesterday, instead, I tried to plan ahead. And so I made arrangements with two of them just in case. And then here's where I fucked up. And it's like a lesson that I learned that I won't do again. But I'm going to share another piece of advice for you guys after that I gave to Tim because of his situation and the frustration that he deals with this always happening to him. I double booked. Like what I tell Tim to do, I'm like, hey, just invite two of them out. And if one of them is late or doing this bullshit saying, oh, I'm running late, I'll be there. I'm on my way and they're never on their way. They're just saying that they're just like still getting ready and they're saying they're on the way. You let them know, look, if you don't come by this time and you're not here by this time, don't come because I already have someone else coming. But then she, he, he always says, oh, I don't want to like uh, upset the other girl or whatever if I have to cancel. And then to cancel the main one that's supposed to come because uh, she's not showing up and then I have the second one come or then I have to cancel the second one if the main one shows up. And so I can understand that part of feeling bad and kind of like, you know, getting their hopes up that they're going to see you, you know, and that's what happened yesterday. I double booked thinking I'm like being smarter and like going to avoid the problem in case she fucking takes forever and I'm impatient because I was already sleepy, getting tired from the trip and everything. I barely got any sleep. And so I wanted to have an early day. So I told Bebecita to come sleep over as well. And she said, yeah, I miss you. I want to sleep over. And so I had them both confirm. Right after I asked Bebecita and she confirmed, she says, hey, I'm ready. You can call the Uber now. I said, all right. And so she came. And then Bebecita remi uh, messaged me like at like eight at night. She's like, hey, when do you want me to come over? And I said, oh, sorry. Um, someone's already here. One of one of the other girls is already here. She said, "Wow, you so you changed and uh, you changed your mind on me that fast." And I said, "Well, no, it's not that." She said, uh, "She's all well, you know. Like you're single, you're free, you're free to do whatever you want, you know. Like I can't feel mad or bad about it, but she what she did feel mad and bad about it, and I apologized. I said, "Hey, look, I'm sorry. You know, I I know it's wrong." And I made the arrangements with you. And I know this isn't an excuse, but I want you to know that I apologize for that because I told you yes. And then she's here. And that's what I was talking about. They have their hopes up and they plan and they separate their their night for you. They block that night for you instead of like going out, or turning down other invitations or whatever. You know, they're getting invited all the time to go out places. So, you know, for them that they uh, when they come to stay with me, I appreciate that because I know that they get a ton of invites. I'm appreciative of them giving me priority or preferring to come hang out and stay with me the night instead of going out with their friends and going out partying or whatever it is they want to do. And so uh, she felt bad and she was telling me, it's all right, well, you're single, you can do whatever you want, you know? And that translates to like, she got, she's like hurt and jealous and like upset that I like invited someone else and just took someone else over her after I had already confirmed with her because she didn't know that I had already talked to her and she said yes too, but I was just confirming. And uh, whoever 
And then I told her, I said, hey, look, you know, I'm, I want to explain to you because I care about you and I don't like having you. I don't want you to feel bad. I said, I want to explain so that way you understand what I was doing and why I did that. And so that way uh, you can understand my my position. So I explained to her, I said, she already confirmed with me. And then I confirmed with you as well at the same time. And I just wanted whoever whoever was going to come over first. I was going to just have them come over, whoever was ready first. And then she said, it's okay. She said, you don't have to feel bad. You don't have to apologize. She said, don't feel bad when I do that to you. If I do that to you, she said, and don't be surprised if I change the way how I treat you or how I feel about you. And I'm like, wow. You know, so that definitely shows she was upset and hurt. She's not really like... Bebecito's not the kind of type to really get jealous normally, but that one I know was kind of fucked up because she's been missing me and she's been wanting to see me. And then, you know, I kind of like rub, slapped it in her face that, you know, that I kind of didn't care and just what that's what it showed to her. But I do actually care. I told her I do care and she knows I care, but she's just upset. And so hola, what's up guys? Had to interrupt the video to bring you guys an important announcement. A lot of you guys watching, I've been receiving tons of messages from guys that are virgins that haven't been laid yet, that want to get laid, and maybe guys that have already been laid, but they're not getting access to girls where they're at, so they want to get laid still. You know, these guys are getting taken advantage of, reaching out to escort strippers or whatever they're reaching out to, wasting all that money. If you really need help that bad and you want to do it that bad, reach out. I'll help you guys. We'll discuss whatever it is that you're facing. It can also be other stuff. Maybe you're heartbroken and need advice or need something to help you get over that heartbreak. Maybe you have a wife or a girlfriend where you feel like she's cheating on you or things just aren't the same. I can help you analyze the situation and get over it i've gone through a lot of relationships already with girls from all over the place all over the world different places you know so i've seen all the things that they do been in long-term relationships so i know what a marriage feels like i know what divorce feels like i haven't been divorced but in a long-term relationship to where i felt like divorce pretty much and so i've seen a lot of people go through it and i can help you guys that are going through these type of things too if you need help maybe like going to another place uh, i can put you in touch with people in different places in part of my network or find people that are viewers as well that can help. That's why I'm doing this to get the word across of the things that I can help you with. Not just that, if you own a business and you're accepting credit cards and you're still paying the fees, you don't gotta pay the fees no more. You're pretty much just throwing your money in the trash. So you're better off just using it on yourself, splurging, taking a vacation, enjoying like this in a pool in a tropical location somewhere where there's nothing but palm trees around and tropical birds that kind of stuff where the weather's perfect you could be doing that instead or if you know have some friends or family that own businesses that are still wasting their money paying the fees reach out send me an email i'll be able to help so i can help with a number of things and i'll be glad to you know put you guys in the right direction same thing if you guys got want to go to costa rica i got friends out there cancun i got friends down there philippines i got a lot of friends out there so you guys need help on any of that stuff reach out I'll be glad to put you in contact so that way you can have a better experience all around. And like I said, if you have, need help with any of the stuff that I mentioned before, let me know. I'll be glad to help you to achieve your goal. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Adios. That's my lesson, you know, like for you guys. I know most of you guys that are watching, if you're just dealing with working girls, you can care less about the working girls because you treat them as like just like an object or like uh, since you're paying that you feel like they just got to do all this shit for you. But you know, whether they're a working girl or a normal girl, I treat them with respect and like, I treat them like a human being, not like some object, even if they are a working girl, you know, and uh, they're still real people and they still have feelings, you know? And so that's kind of like what helps set me apart from the rest of the guys that they deal with because they know that I actually genuinely care about them and I'm treating them with respect and all that stuff. So this is something for you guys to think about. Like if you're trying to make your arrangements, because especially if you're coming into town or wherever you're going and you're trying to make arrangements with the girls, like they don't have respect for your time. It doesn't mean that we have to be the same with them and not respect their time. You know, I kind of fucked up yesterday where I didn't respect either of their time, you know, and uh, had them just kind of treated one like an, an uh, an option is kind of like what I made them feel like is like, okay, you're just, a, you're just an option. And if my first better option arrives, then fuck it. I don't want you coming. It's kind of just saying like that. And that's what kind of hurts them and offends them. And so 
you know, like I wanted to share that. And I know if you're traveling to go somewhere and time is is uh, you don't have much time over there, then you're just going to have to be up front and be like, look, like I mentioned, like how Tim, I told him double book and he feels bad. I'm like, look, you can't feel bad because these girls are wasting your time and especially you're paying them, you know, and there's, this is their job and they want to, they want to make money and yet they're still not showing up and they don't have respect for your time. They waste all your time. You're waiting. They don't show up and you just wasted all that time and your energy. Then you get tired. And by the time, maybe it might be too late. If you start late, then you just fall asleep. That's a waste. And so I told him start double booking and he's all, but I don't want to make him feel bad. I said, who gives a fuck? You know, they don't give a fuck, but that's not the right way. But you, there's, nicer ways to like just be up front with them so they are aware like where i told them just let her know hey if you ain't coming and you ain't here by this time don't bother coming that way they know ahead of time that you've got options and that you're not going to take them disrespecting your time and it makes them respect you more that like you ain't one that they could just walk all over or do whatever they want and show up whenever they want you know and he, he said okay i'll try that next time So he has to double book or you have to double book in case and give them the time limit if they don't show up by a certain time or share their live location that they're actually on their way. Tell them don't come and have your second option come and then just let them know. Like if the second option, especially if they don't know each other, you can just say, hey, I can't see you tonight or, you know, I have I'm busy tonight and just let them know, hey, maybe tomorrow I'll come see you. You can come see me. Something like that. That way you don't let them make them feel bad like how I made Bebecita feel bad. The problem is her and Bebecita are friends. So it's not like I could have said that I'm going to bed or whatever, because if she posts something, they're going to see it. If I post something, they're both going to see it. So I have to be like upfront with them. But for you guys that, what do you call it? Dealing with this, uh, these type of like working girls that you're dealing with in other places that you're traveling where time is scarce, then you can say like, look, uh, I'm, I'm busy tonight or something came up or I'm going to bed early. I'm really sleepy. Let's meet for tomorrow. That way they don't feel bad or rejected and you let them down uh, softly. And that way you can uh, uh, maximize your time and not have it be wasted and feel the frustration being stood up or they don't show up or they cancel on you. You know, I appreciate the outreach, the comments and the emails. And if you can share these videos with a friend or also at the very least, uh, just give it a like. It doesn't cost anything or take more than a half a second for you to click the like, because then what it does when you click like YouTube will suggest the videos to other people that have the same interests as you. So that's kind of like how the whole algorithm works. And so that that goes and helps a lot too. you know, like if you're not writing comments or sending donations or whatever, pressing like and writing a comment helps greatly as well, you know, because then YouTube will know that you find it useful and that it'll start suggesting, it'll know that it's a legit video that can help somebody and it'll start suggesting it to other people that are kind of like watching the same things that you're watching. And then it just, you know, then it, it helps more people. Even John, he's in Costa Rica right now. And he told me like a lot of the girls flaked on him, you know, that he has, a good relationship with even they still flaked on them they made arrangements that they're coming they're going to show up but they still flaked and that's what i'm talking about this is a way to have your belt and suspenders have your backup so that way you don't waste time you don't lose time and you still get to achieve your goal of whatever it is you're trying to achieve that way at the same time keep the girls from disrespecting you and have them still respect you and your time and they'll treat you they'll know that you're different from all the rest that you're you're not just a sucker simp or a pushover that they can walk all over and do whatever they feel like doing so i thought that was an important lesson just because i experienced it last night for my girls i'll have to keep doing it to the point where like i tell her like um hey if you're not here by this time or you don't answer don't come because i'll just invite someone else that way i'll have a set time limit and then i can invite the others but i won't double book because my girls are reliable when i tell them hey i want to see you they they're like here in like five ten minutes max But for my advice for you guys, where I'm saying where you're trying to go out and time is scarce, then you got to do you got to just double book, sometimes triple book in case the two that you got are flakes. John had two flake on him. And so he needed a triple book in that case. So that's what I'm saying. But if you're in a place where there's plenty of options, then it's easy, like especially if it's open 24 hours, then you can just go down there. And um, if your main one or two don't show up, There's always 
you could just go on the hunt again and get a fresh one, you know, start over. But sometimes it's you're not just you're not wanting to do the hunting. You're not wanting to do the negotiating. You're not wanting to go out and drink. You know, you just want that to enjoy with the person that you already have a relationship with or a connection with and you're already comfortable with and you kind of know what to expect and you can just chill and do whatever you want. So it just depends on what you're feeling like doing. Some nights you're just going to want to you're going to want to hunt. You're going to want a fresh, nice, hotter one if you can hopefully find and then but it could be the it could be the opposite where you go hunting and then nothing you don't find anything you like then you can make the arrangements with your main or whoever you have a, a connection with you can invite them or already you could do both you go out and bang a fresh one and then have your other one arranged already to come at a certain time so that way you can bang twice or have her have the guaranteed lined up in case you don't find anything you like so those are my tips that I was thinking about for you guys that I thought I'd share since I woke up this morning thinking about it again and I went to bed feeling bad about it, you know, especially where now um, Bebesita's like upset and she's gonna like essentially saying that she's not gonna prioritize me anymore and to not be surprised if she treats me differently or does it to me, to not feel bad if she does it to me. So almost like she wants to like get me back you know for doing that to her and so you know by her saying it's okay you're free you're not my boyfriend you're single whatever you do whatever you want that's that was kind of showing like her way of saying showing that she cares and like hey that's fucked up you hurt me without really directly saying it like that she was like kind of jealous hurt upset hope you guys learned some good valuable lessons in this one i definitely did that's why i'm sharing it with you guys because then it also helps me at the same time gather my thoughts and uh think about it even more and express it to you guys so all right hope you guys enjoyed i'll talk to you guys soon if you got any tips write them in the comments or if you've experienced the same thing girls flaking on you share those experiences because it's so common even in america girls will flake it's the same thing it's just how they are all right i'll talk to you guys soon adios pura vida you say adios baby bye all right well that's it for now guys i thought i'd share those things with you also share my thoughts on other things that i'm thinking in my life and uh, again like uh, the jedi group is now pretty much ready so if you want to be part of the young jedi or the jedi masters send me your emails already so that way i can Put everyone that's on the list already and send out the notification that hey we're about to launch i'm pretty happy with the group that i put together it's going to be pretty useful and it's going to be a great networking place for you guys to network and ask questions that you can't ask anybody from guys that are living the life and that can't share this with any information with anybody they'll be more willing to share with you guys in the group because they know that you've been vetted and that you share a similar type of uh, lifestyle. And so, you know, just one tip or one piece of advice will make it all worth it. You know, and I ain't charged, I'm just charging you guys to get in. And that's also to weed out the serious people, but you'll make that money back with just one piece of a good advice or a, a idea of a place that you wanna go to or save you from getting ripped off in the spot. That'll pay for it 10 times over. You know, I'm not charging a monthly fee or anything to remain a member. It's like once you're in, you're in for life unless you do something stupid or start problems or whatever in the group. Then, but yeah, uh, that's why I'm like, if you guys want to get in, send the email. It's pretty much ready now. Uh, I'm going to be launching it probably within the next maybe one to two weeks and uh, get you guys going in there. Looking forward to seeing all of you in there and sharing some more stories and advice, you know, possibly do some Zoom calls for just the group members in there that way we can like network <clears throat> bring the net you know then have the networking effect of people getting to know each other ask questions in real time and stuff too so all right well that's it for now guys all right guys so i'm putting together these groups the my jedi master inner circle so there's going to be two levels to it you're going to have the jedi masters which are the guys that are making 100k or more per year at least and have been well traveled have a lot of experience and know of different places that we can go to experience and find beautiful girls and be able to share amongst everyone and give advice to other people as well. And then we're also gonna have the young Jedis that maybe aren't as experienced or just starting out in life or are young and 
don't really have much money, but they want to live this lifestyle. They're being inspired and they want to start and learn and be able to communicate with each other. So that'll be the second level. And of course, the Jedi Master level can will be in both so that you'll have the Jedi Masters also helping the young Jedis by answering questions uh, for people that are new. And then the Jedi Masters, what we're going to do is have like trips maybe once a year where all of us Jedi Masters come together and have go to a destination where we'll be able to experience all of this together and share and network and share financial advice, how to make money. It'll be how to make money, how to deal with breakups, how to meet girls, pretty much everything that you're seeing on my video, my videos that I'm teaching, we'll be able to network and do it in person and put, put together these groups and meetings for people and kind of be my, me as the connector, connecting all of you guys together. Cause I'm getting all these messages from people from all walks of life in different parts of the world. And a lot of you guys tell me that you don't have anyone to share these experiences with or share your stories and share all the knowledge that you've uh, accumulated throughout the years. And once you communicate with me, it's like you're spilling your entire story because you're so excited to tell someone finally because there's no one else you can take. You can't tell your friends, can't tell your family, and there's no one you can ask questions. There's no one you can uh, share these intimate details with. And so I wanna bring you guys together with other like-minded people that are watching my videos and kind of wanna live this lifestyle as well. So if you're interested in joining the Jedi Master Inner Circle, still putting together all the fine details, but I'll put you guys on a wait list. Send me an email and let me know which Jedi Master uh, or Jedi part level in the inner circle that you want to be in there's going to be either the young jedi or the jedi masters and the jedi masters is going to be 500 for you guys to join that's the, the screening process and then we got the young jedis for 50 bucks that way it's affordable and the 500 is to screen out obviously if you're doing well 500 isn't much and then it keeps out the people that aren't serious it's kind of like the how to weed out the people that aren't really real. And of course there's gonna be moderation and there's gonna be like con content moderation where I moderate who gets in and interview the people that wanna come in to make sure they're real. And that way everyone that's in the group is actually there because they wanna be and that they share this similar outlook on life and wanna live this type of life and level up even more, make more connections, make more friends kinda of like me and Tim the 72 year old that you've been seeing interview and other people you haven't seen in my videos uh, that I hang out with, it'll be kind of like being into the inner circle and make, make these kind of bonds that will last a lifetime and these kind of memories that we can share together and have some awesome adventures together. So if you're interested, send me an email and then put wait list you'd want to be on. And then as soon as I'm ready, I'll notify all you guys that it's ready. And then we'll put you guys in maybe a telegram or a discord, or I'm still trying to figure out the logistics, but once it's ready, then you guys will be invited once you pay the entrance fee and then we'll get you in. All right, guys, that's it. Adios, pura vida. Can you say adios, baby? Adios. <laughs> Bye. Well, like, guys, if you uh, coming down here to Cancun, Playa del Carmen, I have friends down here as well that can take care of stuff. If you're heading down to Costa Rica, I got friends in Costa Rica that can help take care of the stuff, you know, help uh, assist with transportation and activities and lodging and things like that. And then the business that helped me live this life is the credit card service business. So if you own a business and you're still paying the credit card fees, you don't have to do that anymore. Stop wasting your money. You could be enjoying it every month instead of like whatever you're paying to the bank, a thousand, two thousand to the bank every month. You take it and go on a vacation. Look at the ocean, how beautiful it is down here. And the weather's perfect. It's so early in the morning. I'm already sweating. It's tropical. And like uh, people are swimming down there, if you could see. And I, the only thing I wish that was down here is the that there was more waves. But like I said, if you own a business, uh, you don't have to pay for the fees. You can use it for vacation, take your family out, reinvest in your business, or whatever it is you want to do on with it. It's just it's way better than wasting it, paying it to the bank and getting nothing in return. So that's it. Uh, send me an email or write in the comments. I'll be glad to help you out. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later. Adios, Pura Vida.